All right, good evening, everybody. I just wanted to kind of give you a little update on my flickering light issue. So the last video that I put out was regarding what I discovered in regards to why a lot of my lights in my house were flickering. And for those of you that didn't see that last video, uh, Cliff's Notes version was uh, my Mac Mini was doing something, I still don't know what it was doing, uh, introducing some problem onto one specific phase of my environment which a lot of my lights in my house were on and when that mac mini was turned on and plugged in the lights in the house would just start doing this this flickering thing so for the time being i just have my ups with the mac mini uh running across my office yeah i know trip hazard uh into the utility room and it's it's going to my well Future videos coming on this portable power station. Gonna be working on it at some point, but that's what it's powering off of right now. But I do have an outlet, I believe, back here, behind the giant Lego Millennium Falcon. I believe that's the other phase, but my my UPS cord isn't, isn't quite long enough uh, to come out and around to plug it in to test it, so I kinda need to I really don't want to have to use the extension cord to plug into here to go, you know, five feet. So, I don't know. I think I'm just being lazy right now. <laughs> I think that's what it's boiling down to. But I need to try and plug this UPS into that outlet and see if I still have the same problems. My assumption is that I'm still going to have uh, the flickering issue, but it's just going to be on different lights in the house. So, for you, it might have only been a week, but for me, it's actually been closer to three weeks since I made that discovery and made that change. Yes, I know, in three weeks I still haven't plugged in that uh, Mac Mini into the other outlet. Let me just recap, after I made the discovery, I was on 7961 firmware. And my first thought after I made the discovery of the Mac Mini is, I wonder if I can get the kitchen lights to work on the dimmer. So as soon as I got done with work that day, I went through and unwired the outlets and it's a three-way switch with the dimmer so it's a specialized wiring so i actually had to look it up online and, and got it all wired up flip the breaker back on and they're still flickering so unwired that haven't really messed with that since so that night went by no flickering and even into the next day still no flickering but as i went into the weekend there was at least one instance where, did I really see, are my mind, is my mind playing tricks on me? And lo and behold, there was a flicker again, but I, I didn't know what it was from. And I noticed it when I was in the kitchen, the kitchen lights were doing that flicker again. And remember that uh, the, the kitchen, my office light, the master bathroom, bedroom lights, all those lights are on the same. Uh, uh, inverter, same face. And so I walked into a different room and, and in that other room, those lights were flickering as well. But it was it was evening time. I looked to see, all right, do I have a very minimal load on the inverter? No, I was pulling three, 500 watts. Um, so I didn't really know what was going on. So I was kind of, you know, feeling defeated. I'm like, doggone it. I thought we had this figured out. But then the next night, no flickering. So I was just really mm, more annoyed than anything because I, it was still happening. And I was on the new firmware again, so I thought everything was, was perfect. And then Signature Solar came out with their 7963, which was supposed to be the ground neutral bonding firmware fix. And so I'm like, all right, well, uh, nothing else. I'll, I'll try and see if that makes any difference. And so I loaded that firmware, and that night, no problem. Next night, no problem. But then again, the following night, we were we were getting ready for bed. I was 
in the bedroom, my, I had my nightstand light turned down and my wife walked in and she still had to finish getting ready for bed. So she walked over and she did what, uh, you know, she normally does when it's cold at night. She walks over and she goes click and turns on her heated blanket. And as soon as she turned on that heated blanket, my, my nightstand lamp started flickering. So I said, turn that off for a second. She did, flickering stopped. I said, okay, turn that on again. She did, all of a sudden it started again. And again, this is, this is not that super bright flicker from when you see a load kicking on. Um, this is that, that very faint flicker. And I said, okay, one more time, turn it off. So she did, and it stopped. I said, all right, last time, I promise. <laughs> she's probably getting annoyed with me click 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 um but i said okay turn it back on and so then she turned it on and i walked out into the kitchen and i turned the kitchen lights on and the kitchen lights were doing that flicker so the the heated blanket whatever's going on inside the heated blanket like it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot to it um you got the control unit and then you've got the uh big resistive heating coil in the blanket um, but for whatever reason that's causing this the, the lights to flicker again and I'd never noticed it the nights before because when I got ready for bed I jump in bed and I turn the nightstand light off and whenever my wife turned on her heated blanket my lamp was already off so I never knew and if if I, I had never been able to put that that connection together on those nights where it was already cold so she went and preheated her blanket before she got into bed and I was in the kitchen and all of a sudden the lights start flickering. I just never made that connection before until both of us were in the room at the same time and she physically turned it on while I was right there. So here's the, the remote for the heated blanket. It's a Sealy, let's see what it tells us here. 180 watts, not really a whole lot of information. So I have, switched everything back to battery mode so that we can try and run this test and see. Um, so right now the heated blanket is turned off. So let's see if we can catch this flickering coming as soon as I turn this on. And again, it's a it's that stupid faint flicker so it might not show up on camera. So let's turn this on in three, two, one. I'm kind of hoping that you can kind of see it as the reflection of the blinking. Um, I set the blanket on a four. It does the same thing whether it's on a one or or high. But it, it's introducing that flickering issue onto this phase. It's still too light outside to be able to catch this on the kitchen and every other light. But since these lights are on the same phase, it's going to do the same thing on this one as it is in the kitchen. So... Uh, again, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it, but I was able to figure out that this specific model of the Sealy heated blanket does cause the same problem. And I ended up coming downstairs to try and grab my kilowatt meter off of my computer so that I could try and look at the hertz and the voltage and the power factor off of that heated blanket. And lo and behold, my office lamp is flickering because it's on that same phase. All right, as I squeeze next to the bed, I've got my kilowatt meter here and plug it in. We'll have to reset everything. Uh, and it doesn't want to fit. And I think my lamp is going to get unplugged here. All right, so I had to unplug my wife's lamp here because the kilowatt meter doesn't want to fit. So we'll plug that in and let's see here, reset. I think that's how you reset it. Yep, looks like it. Okay, so currently 60 hertz. Power factor is awesome because there's nothing being drawn from it, I guess. Under 19.4 volts. All right, so let's plug in the heat blanket and we will turn it on. 
see, we're on a four now. All right, so still pretty good hertz, 59.60, 59.9. Power factor point, well, it's, it's pretty good. At least I think the higher the number, the better, closer to 100, or closer to one, I guess. I still don't understand how all that stuff works. 118.5 volts. 1.25 amps. That still ain't bad for a heated blanket. 130 some watts. Nope, there goes the power factor. Boy, that just really dropped, didn't it? 0.12. So maybe that's part of our problem, hmm? At least from this, this perspective, I wonder if the heated blanket cycles on and off. Is that what it does? I know somebody's gonna tell me how it works, but yeah, that's, that could definitely be the reason that it's causing the flickering. And then over on my nightstand that I turned the light on, can you see the flickering? Sure hope so. And again, where power factor is fluctuating really low to really high, which makes me think that this is somehow fluctuating up and down. Does the voltage stay the same? Eh, it's close. The amperage is fluctuating, just like the wattage. So, low to high, low to high. So, yeah, somebody, somebody explain to everybody how these uh, heated blankets work. And then also, if somebody can explain how the power factor works, that would be great. Because it's nice that these these kilowatt meters tell you all that, um, but you got to know how to read it. And I really don't. All right, because I know somebody's going to want to know what the power factor is on this Mac Mini. So what I did, I ran an extension cord, again, for testing purposes, uh, behind the Millennium Falcon, over the heater, around the woods to grandmother's house we go. And we've got our kilowatt meter and our Mac Mini. So let's... Plug that all in, reset, let me turn the Mac Mini on, Bam. all right, so you heard it, boot up, so power factor on this, last I looked, I thought it was around 0.8, and I actually bought this kilowatt meter specifically for this test, uh, my last one, well, my last power meter for the wall was one of these cheap um, ones that the con electric company gave me. So this extension cord is plugged into the other inverter, the other phase, and so I will let that run on that unit and see what other lights in my house end up flickering um if it's minimal lights then i'm just going to leave it plugged into this other unit or this other inverter because right now no flickering coming from my office and the mac mini is turned on boy that reflection's horrible so yeah i i don't know what constitutes a really bad power factor 119.4 volts lower a tenth of an amp I love these Mac minis they pull nothing power wise and we've got 60 Hertz so definitely not the best power factor but again I don't know what constitutes a uh, really good versus really bad or average. 
Now, the interesting thing is when I finally logged into the Mac and the fan started to spin up, then the power factor went up. But as it sat idle with, you know, kind of waiting for, for the login screen, that's when it was lower at that 60-something range. But now that I've logged in and it's it's booting everything up, trying to get ready to work, uh, the power factor has come up a little bit. Again, it's, it's kind of proven my point that, yes, some of these inverters might have issues when it comes to, to lights flickering, but sometimes, and you have to do your individual testing yourself, sometimes it may be a device in your house that's causing that problem. And why it doesn't have any problem when you're running off of grid power versus battery power, I don't know. Is it, is it messing up the sine wave that these things are putting out? I don't know. Um, lots of great comments and suggestions and ideas from people, but I really don't have an answer to it. But if you're experiencing that, that faint flicker, and again, I'm not talking about your, your furnace kicks on or your refrigerator kicks on and all of a sudden you get this blink because of this heavy excessive load turning on. I'm not talking about that. So, so what happens at my house and what I have noticed is when the well or, or the fridge or the, even the furnace blower kicks on, I get a quick flash and then like five little mini flickers. So it's like flash, blink, 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 blink. And I can tell you that that means that something heavy just turned on. If I don't see that quick flash and the few repetitive flickers, then I know that it's something else. And that's that's just what I've come to, to see in my own house. So I just kind of wanted to, to share a quick update. I have not gone through and tried to put the dimmer back in now that I have 79.63. It's a lot of work just having to unwire and rewire this this customized three-way dimmer because it's one of those fade dimmers. So you got to have on the dimmer side, you've got to have it wired this way. And then on the three-way side, you've got to have it wired this way. And it's, I don't know, maybe at some point I'll try it again. But I know when with the 7961, it, it didn't make any difference at all. And the lights just kept flickering. The bulbs are Sylvania bulbs, which seem to work really well uh, from that laundry, uh, the washing machine test uh, that drastically reduced the flickering from the washing machine agitation cycle. Yeah, I think the dimmer is a Lutron, which I thought it was a decent name brand. Maybe not. I never would have thought uh, of, of all the stuff in my house, I never would have thought the Mac Mini and the heated blanket would be introducing this, this flickering issue. But it is. If you're still experiencing these flickers, after you've updated to this firmware, which is supposed to fix your stuff, find a circuit that you know flickers. And then turn off everything else and see if it still flickers. If it does, then you know there's something on that circuit that's causing the issue. If it doesn't, start turning on other circuits until you start seeing the flicker. And then you have to trace down, all right, well, what else is on that circuit? Or you deal with the flickering. I don't know, I really don't know what to tell you. So with that, I'm gonna let y'all go. This should hopefully be a short and sweet little update for you. Just letting you know where exactly this, this flickering issue is uh, from my standpoint. So. Uh, Y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later.